Last season was difficult for the Owls of Rice. They played only five games, no non-conference games, and they were so close. And joining us to talk about that and the upcoming season, their head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Mike, good to see you again. Ron, great to see you. Always uh, love this time of year because it means balls are right around the corner. You got that right. Now, you said last year you felt that was a bowl team, and you have not changed your mind about the 2021 team, have you? No, not at all. I, I felt like we were a uh, very good football team last year, and I think we've made some big jumps since then. I think we were a bowl team if we could have played our full schedule, as you mentioned, and uh, certainly that's one of the goals we have for this football team is the opportunity to play in the postseason, go to a bowl game, and win is what we're talking about around this place. Well, when you, when you look at the improvement last year, what really jumped out to me was the defensive improvement. You were one of the leaders in Conference USA in defense. You shut out all five opponents in the first quarter last year, the only FBS team to hold opponents scoreless in the first 15 minutes. Your defense really came alive last season. They did. Brian Smith is doing such an unbelievable job with that unit. Uh, so proud of the way that the, the coaches and the players have bought in and confidence that they have in his scheme and in him. Uh, and then you talk about the, the veterans that we have coming back, the leadership on that side of the ball. And it's so exciting. Even though we were the 12th ranked scoring defense in the nation last year, we have even bigger expectations of that group this year. 23rd defense overall. I think what really stood out is when you blanked Marshall, here was a team that was already going to win the East. You go in there, you shut them out 20 to nothing. First win over a ranked team since 97. First shutout of a ranked team since 1960. Had to be a confidence builder for your players. Ron, it really was. And, and you talk about those numbers, 1997 and 1960. Like, I, I, me and you weren't very old in 1960. <laughs> That's a long time ago uh, to go back to the last time the Rice House shut out a ranked team. And so proud of our guys. And, and it was a complete team effort. But the five turnovers that uh, the defense had certainly set the stage for that day to go the way that it did. Uh, our team's on the same page about it. We're excited about it. It brought a lot of life into this program and on campus, but it's not a mountaintop win, right? Like it's not the pinnacle. It's a proof of concept and it's proof that when we all do our jobs, great things can happen. And uh, it's just another bright spot for this future. Let's go to the other side of the football. Marquise Tuyasasopo comes over as the offensive coordinator from Cal. Is he more downfield type coach? Yeah, Tui and I, you know, I had an opportunity to work with Tui when he was a quarterback with the New York Jets in 2007. And I loved the way he led, loved the way he came to work and attacked everything. You know, we could be installing quick game for the 31st time, and he's taking just unbelievable notes and uh, just so focused on this game, so in love with the game. Now, our backgrounds are very, very similar, right? You, you look at a West Coast offensive system that Bill Walsh really was the godfather of, passed down to John Gruden, and John Gruden was one of Tui's coaches and, uh, in the, with the Oakland Raiders. And then uh, Coach Gruden is also the one that taught Bill Callahan and David Shaw the West Coast offense, and those are my mentors in the scheme. <laughs> so we have a very similar background. But to answer your question, yeah, Coach Tui wants to throw the ball over the wall. He's done such a good job with the quarterbacks already. You know, he's been in their shoes. He played quarterback in the National Football League for eight years. And uh, so I think it's really exciting. Some of the stuff he's doing with the empty passing game has been outstanding. And I just I look around and I see the smile on his face every day and the passion he has because he knows he's got some great toys on that offensive unit. And that makes any offensive coordinator happy. Well, let's talk about the quarterback because the last six seasons, if I'm not mistaken, Rice has started a different quarterback. Is the quarterback situation still a little bit unsettled for the Owls this year? Yeah, the quarterback situation is definitely one that's going to be decided in training camp. And we're excited about that competition. You know, you look at returning Giovanni Johnson who was the starter in the Marshall game. You look at Wiley Green, who had a great spring and really finished strong. We had brought in Jake Constantine and uh, a couple other guys over the past couple years. Jo you know, Constantine came in and, and really in spring ball, he really improved every week of spring ball. In the fifth week, he had his best week, as you would expect. Uh, so that was great. TJ had a great last week and a great spring game. But we looked at our team and we talked about how things were in the spring and we thought we are a really good defense. We are a really solid offense, but the position that wasn't living up to our standard day in and day out was quarterback. So we got to do something to improve that position. And so we made a concerted effort to go out and get somebody else to bring in. And we feel really fortunate that uh, we were able to bring in Luke McCaffrey, uh, who played in Nebraska last year. I've known him since he was nine years old. I, I love and trust the family. So uh, he's a great addition to the room. We're excited about him as well as all those quarterbacks. 
Well, they're going to have people to throw to because Bradley Rosner is going to be coming back. He's been nominated for the Bolitnikoff Award. Also, Jordan Myers coming back, and he is a defensive coordinator's nightmare, is he not? Yeah, Jordan, uh, you'll get to hear from here in just a second, but, you know, I mess with him all the time. I say he's a Swiss Army knife, and I, <laughs> I think people say that about guys that do a lot of different things. You know, Jordan plays inline tight end. He plays extended receiver for us, and he's our short yards and goal line running back and will probably carry the ball more in some normal situations this year. So he's a Swiss Army knife, not just because he can do a lot of things, but I, I think I coined the phrase for him that he can cut you with every blade too. So, so excited to have Jordan Myers back and, and as a part of this offense. You mentioned Bradley Rosner. I think Jake Bailey is going to have a breakout year uh, doing some of the similar roles you saw Austin Trammell do for us in the past. So it's a really exciting time. Well, one thing you did before we get to the schedule, one thing you did I thought was interesting, everybody who made it through last year as part of your team, you gave them a letter. I think that uh, is, is very admirable on your part. Yeah, Ron, it was just a, a really something that was important to me to letter all those people. I don't think anybody's ever been through a more challenging football season than the 2020 season presented. And we asked these things, to, these guys to do things that were not normal. We asked them to not interact with their family, to not go out, to really go to their virtual classes, come in our building and make selfless choices to really do things only with their teammates. And uh, it worked for us. We were ready to play every game on our schedule. We didn't get to do that because some of our opponents weren't ready. But I thought the, the sacrifices and the commitment these guys made to this team and to each other warranted a letter. Well, let's take a look at your schedule because you've got eight bowl teams on the schedule. You're also going to be revisiting the old Southwest Conference days. A pair of road games versus Texas and Arkansas. And speaking of Arkansas, you kick things off with a tough one on September the 4th. Your first three, that's a brutal opening schedule, Coach. Yeah, Ron, it's a great opening schedule. It's what <laughs> guys come to Rice to do. It's to play big-time college football and graduate with a world-class degree. And so we love the opportunity to go up there into the SEC West and kick things off. We love playing the guys across town. We can't wait for that game. And excited to go to Austin with this football team as well. I think this team has proven they're not going to be scared of anybody, and they're going to prepare to win the game. And that's what I look forward to. I, I cannot – I'm glad we have training camp, but I can't <laughs> wait to kick this thing off with training camp and then get to that opportunity up in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, Mike, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You had a great season last year, and we're so close, and we wish you nothing but the best this year. Thanks so much. Go Owls. The Owls of Rice defense, outstanding last season. One of the reasons defensive lineman Elijah Garcia, the redshirt senior from Stevens High School in San Antonio, Texas, many publications are putting him all-conference USA for 2021, and he joins us now. Elijah, good to have you with us today. I'm glad to be here. This is, this is you know, awesome. We were talking to Coach Bloomgren, and, and, and he made a great comment. He said he really believed last year's team was a bowl team. And, again, you didn't play any non-conference games, but he believes this year's team is also a bowl team. Is half the battle for players just believing that the Rice Owls can go to a bowl? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, when, you know, last year we went to Marshall. Um, something that coach said that's really stuck with, I mean, I feel like the whole team is just having unwavering belief, you know, and that's how we got that win that, that day. You know, we went out there, we believed in each other, and we just, we got the job done. And I really feel like that's, you know, that's the difference between this last year's team and it's going to be the difference again this year. You know, I talked to coach about that, and, and one of the questions I asked him is, you go into a team that is favored and will win the East, will play in the title game, and you skunk them. You don't allow them to score. And what that did to the team's confidence from a player's perspective, what did that do to your confidence? Man, it just felt great. You know, we, we went out there, we just, we played. And before we knew it, we were up. And after we were up, we were just like, man, we're just going to keep putting on them and, and get out of there with the win. Um, and I think that win just, I mean, it just showed how far this program has come and just how much work we put in and, Man, it was, it's my favorite win since I've been here at Rice, so I hope to have a couple more of those this year. You know, we, we see that the, the shutout of, of Marshall at the bottom of the screen, but also you shut out every opponent in the first quarter. The only FBS team to hold their opponent scoreless in the first 15 minutes. That start fest menta starting fast mentality, that has to be big with this Rice defense. Oh, yes, sir. No, it is. Um, one thing that you know, we take pride in, especially on the D-line, is uh, just like putting the ball down and just getting after it no matter where we're at on the field. And 
you know, they're not in until they're in. That's something that Coach Smith always harps on us, and, and that's something we believe is a defense. Okay, schedule. This year is going to be a challenging schedule, but Coach Bloomgren was right. Players want to play the best, and you're going to play some of the best, obviously, with Arkansas, Texas, crosstown rival Houston. Are those games kind of get the hairs on the back of your head going up a little bit, knowing you're going to play some of the schools like that? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, getting the chance to, to play Texas again after, you know, playing in NRG a couple years ago. Um, and, you know, last year was, was my last year, but, you know, getting the chance to come back as a super senior, I just look at it as another opportunity to, you know, play in a big game. And, um, you know, growing up in Texas, all you, all you hear is about is the Longhorns and getting a chance to go over there and, and just and get a win. It's, it's going to be an amazing opportunity. I'm really excited for it. Well, as I well as open it up. <laughs> against an SEC school. There you go. I, I never want to forget about the academics. And, and you're a very impressive student. Four times you have been on the Conference USA honor roll. How impressive is that for you and your family? I mean, being, you know, the first person in my family to go to a major university, it's it's been an amazing experience here at Rice. Um, you know, my parents are always, you know, tougher on me uh, with my grades. And they just make sure, they wanted to make sure I was, you know, bringing home A's and B's, and that's just something that's always stuck with me. And I was like, man, if I can do it in high school, I can do it again here and at Rice. And that's just something I just try to do every semester. And it's been paying off. So <laughs> I got one more semester in, in grad school, and then I'll be done. But it's it's been something that I'm, I'm glad to have carried throughout my academic career. Well, I think that has been very, very special. Congratulations on your academics and your final year. Much success, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Rice has a lot of weapons on offense, including tight end Jordan Myers, the redshirt senior out of Dickinson, Texas. 2020 All-Conference USA first team. He's been on the Conference USA honor roll five straight years. Coach Bloomgren calls him the Swiss Army Knife. Defensive coordinators of opposing teams call Jordan Myers a headache. We call him good. And Jordan Myers is going to join us right now to talk about Rice House. Jordan, good to see you, my friend. It's a pleasure to be on here with you guys. Okay. How y'all doing? Good. What would you rather be called, a headache or a Swiss Army knife? <laughs> I, the headache one is a new one. I actually really like that one. But, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of adapted the Swiss Army knife from high school, and it carried over here well with uh, Coach Bloom and his offense. So, you know, I'm, I'll definitely stick with the Swiss Army knife. Well, the Swiss Army knife is because you, you obviously line up a tight end. You can line up at wide receiver. You'll line up in the backfield. It's – it's like you can line up pretty much anywhere. Would you rather catch a pass for a touchdown, decleat somebody on a block, or run somebody over for a touchdown? Or all of the above? Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's a good question. You could probably say all of the above, but a lot of it depends on what the team needs out of me uh, at the moment. You know, So that's what I take pride in, having the ability to move around and do what the team needs me to do in order to uh, give us the best chance to win on the field. Now you have a new offensive coordinator, and Marquise Tuiasa Sopo had a good career in the National Football League, well-respected, came from Cal. How do you like his offense? Oh, I love it. Um, like Bloom was saying earlier, he talked about just the connection that they have together. Um, they're very similar, um, and the energy that he brings to this offense um, definitely uh, just makes me more excited about the game. Even though you know, I've been here you know, a good little while, uh, but just seeing him walk in every morning, it could be 5.30 in the morning, it could be 9.30 p.m. at night. He's going to come in with the same smile, the same energy, the same excitement and love for the game. I think that's a, a, an addition to the, uh, to the offense that, that, that's going to really help us get through um, and, and just elevate to that next level uh, in, in, in the sport. Now, Coach Bloom really felt that this team was a bowl team last year. And unfortunately, you were only able to play five games. But on the bright side, did that give you confidence coming into this year? Yeah, uh, it definitely did. Um, it, it's always tough whenever you prepare week in, week out to prepare uh, to play another opponent and, you know, piece together all the hard work that you and your teammates have, have done for, for, you know, however many weeks it was just to come, on a, come out on the other side and not play. Uh, you know, but I think – what that has done for us as a team is that that given us a, a, a lot of hunger to motiv and motivation through the spring, through the summer. And I think a lot of people are going to feel uh, that hunger as we come into this next season. Now, you, as you mentioned, you are a redshirt senior. You've been at Rice a while. You're getting your master's. It's going to be in accounting. 
what will come after football for you? Uh, you know, the, the work, the work life, the good stuff. Um, but, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, live in a moment. So I go ahead and just try to soak up the last years of football that I have and the, the last moments that I have with this team. But accounting, do you want to do like company account? I need an accountant. So when you graduate, give me a call, okay? I could be your first <laughs> yes, client. I got, hey, you're I my, got you. I got you. I could say I've got a Swiss Army knife for an accountant. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be good to put on a resume. But I tell you, Jordan, we really enjoy watching you play. And, and uh, Rice was so close last season. And we wish you and the team the very best of luck in the 2021 year. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you all for having me. Thank you so much. Still to come on Conference USA kickoff presented by Ryan. We're going to take a look at Louisiana Tech. Coach Skip Holtz will join us right after this.